there, everyone. Welcome to Monday. Uh, yeah, it continues to be an exciting day and time. So, Margaret, I'm going to go ahead and close all this out. I'm going to close that out. So, so today's conversation is about data modeling. And the reason it's – we brought Ken in here because, A, I know he won't freeze up on TV, and I don't want to pick on Centauri 272 at all because we already – talk to her and I don't and I know Ken can listen if he can put up with Nick he can easily put up with me so that won't be a problem at all so Ken is here he hasn't been prepped he doesn't know what's going to happen so let's walk through what's going to happen so data modeling I didn't spend too much time on this because all of us have to go through this the hard way right it's not there's no cookie cutter easy thing to get on on in terms of the notes so I'm going to bring up in a text file right here I'm going to pop it open so data modeling in terms of what we're talking about, or if you're a SQL developer, uh, a structured database modeling moment is to understand the business workflow, the business processes, the business needs of the customer, whoever that customer is. Maybe you work for them as an employee, maybe you're an outside developer. You have to understand what their needs are. Then the goal is to kind of make the database system support it. And that means that you have to really understand what they're doing. Because if we start off with the idea that Ken is a, let's talk about his hot air balloon event. So, and, and you've seen Nick talk about this before, but we're going to bring this down to real basics for intermediate developers. So if you're a beginning developer, you kind of fiddle your way through learning FileMaker, you build some things that work, it's pretty great. But really understanding the process. At an intermediate developer, you really have to be able to do this data modeling thing. I think as a brand new developer, you kind of fumble your way through it and you get success and things work. And maybe they don't work perfectly, but they work close enough and you're pretty happy with that. But this conversation is to help all those 40%. So your situation might be different, but I need feedback and Margaret's going to be monitoring feedback and giving, uh, looking for questions and things as we go. And so... When you're going to, before you build a system, keep in mind that you want to, at a general rule, uh, keep in mind um, the final out, I'm going to say the final output or results or reports or whatever. So you're building this with the anticipation of something squirting out the, the back end of it, okay? That just keep this in mind because this will help inform your decision how you build things. The next thing you have to do is you have to meet the business person who's doing this, or maybe it's yourself. You have to take Ken comes into a room. We take his cell phone. Ken, put your cell phone. No, no. Ken, give me your. We're gonna put cell phone in a box at the door. Don't touch your cell phone. Okay, Ken. Now we're gonna ask Ken questions about his business. So Ken, loosely in one sentence, what do you do with hot air balloons? It's your annual thing. What is your annual thing? Well, we have a, a gathering of balloons, and as part of the process, we need to make sure that the documents for the pilot and the documents for the balloons are uh, all um, in sync and up to date. All right, so let's just talk about nouns. These are things or nouns. I'm going to start with this. Nouns. Nouns is a thing. Not a verb is doing, like blowing up. A balloon is a thing. A verb is else so let's talk about so we have balloons okay these are not balloons these are the balloons you ride in you float around okay we have balloons then we have pilots okay and then so then you're like okay so as i def as i define these entities odds are these are going to become a table for everyone right so the odds are they're going to become a table and so once again it's not so much in this case but see what i'm doing right look look Notice the questions that I will ask, and I'm sure most of you could do a better job, but I'm the one stuck doing the show today, right? So this is the question I ask. So balloon, so what is the relationship? Uh, I mean, obviously a pilot drives a balloon, right? Flies, we yes. Whatever, it drives whatever balloon. So, but you have this event, so the event's once a year. So let's assume for the for the moment that we're going to have a file maker. And so there's, let's say one event a year. So let's just assume that a single FMP12 FileMaker file supports one year. And once again, this doesn't have anything to do with your real solution right now, Ken. Understand this is like I'm if good. we were starting from yeah. no, scratch, yeah. okay? Because I don't know yeah. if you do it this way, and I particularly at the moment don't care. I'm just trying to demonstrate the, the conversation. That's why I didn't practice with Ken, because I don't know what he's going to say, right? Um, and if he might be belligerent. And or he might not even understand. He goes, I'm not a pilot. I don't I don't I sew balloons together. 
literally. And I don't know much about them. You're going to have people who don't. Here's the thing. Ken knows this, I think. But there are, you'll be interviewing someone and you'll realize they only have part of the answers and you have to interview Ken's assistant and then someone else. And you might have to interview, they call these in the, in the world of business stakeholders, a stakeholder. They, they, they have some sort of stake in the mission being successful, right? So we got balloons, we pots, we have this events once a year. So we're going to assume that the FMP 12 file, everything in it supports that ballooning event for the year. So we have pilots, we have balloons. So... Just tell me about this thing. Like you had this situation where you had to like, you know, attach the pilot to balloon. What, so tell me kind of what your business needs are loosely. Well, both balloons and pilots each have a set of documents and I need to um, track the documents, but I also need, I have pilots that have multiple balloons and I have balloons that have multiple pilots on them. All right, so slow down. We have to di then we have to dissect what you just said. So you have a balloon, Understood. and you have a pilot. So this is important. A pilot might have more than one balloon. A pilot might have two balloons that they're bringing to the event. Okay, and so there may be more than one pilot assigned to any given balloon. Well, and so this this is where we try to decide whether we're going to de define like if in the balloons table. We could have a field, a field called pilot one, and then you could have a field called pilot two, right? And so the question right. is, is that good enough to solve what your needs are, right? And so then pilot, how many, so, uh, but, okay, back up. There could be one, okay, <laughs> a balloon must have at least one pilot, <laughs> unless you yes. launch it with no one on board. One pilot or two pilots, but always at least one and no more than two. Can I say that safely? Sure. Sometimes okay. there's three. Sometimes there's three. Let's do that. All right. I'd like to see three people argue about driving the balloon, but that's fine. Field. Well, not they wouldn't all do it at the same time, but they would fly. One flies it one day. Pilot two flies it another day. Ah, pilot three perfect. Flies it stop, day. stop, stop, stop. See, this is the <laughs> shit that happens. You think you've got a track. You start writing it down. Then he unrolls a giant turd and rolls it into the <laughs> conversation and explodes everywhere. And then you're wiping the mess. It's like when the cat takes a dump on the floor. You don't see it. And you walk in the house and you track it on your shoes all over the house. It's horrible. Listen, we had an event. And I assumed that there would be pilot one. And a and a co-pilot in the balloon at the same time. No, so there's I mean, only they one might balloon. be there. There might be there, but there's only one pilot in command. But and... what? So then what? So walk me through this process of tell me about your event, like this. So so you see how this goes. About the time everyone you think you know what it is, it changes. So at the event we have balloons, we have pilots, but we might have a lot of pilots flying a different balloon, right? And so. I, I, I kind of know this, but I'm going to ask this question generically. What would constitute changing from pilot one to pilot two or pilot three in a balloon? What, why would I do that? Just that can... um, because there are 14 sessions and just pilot one is tired today. And so pilot two flies. Okay, or notice. pilot three needs the experience. Here, now notice what just happened. He said a brand new word, a brand new word, session. What the hell is this, a balloon session? Is that like a flight? time or a flight afternoon or uh what is a session because now we have it's a new a, noun, it's, that's a, a thing. it's a it's basically a flight or a a flight type activity so there's yeah there's nine ams and there's five pm sessions during the course of the event and so a session is i'm going to say is a flight uh flight window. Slot. yeah this is a flight slot yeah. so this is the same as like an airline if you go to an airport and they see all the arriving and all the parting that's kind of the same thing those are like sessions right that same kind of idea it's a, a specific flight a, a session is a let me write this out is a spe specific flight on a date and time for a specific aircraft because actually balloons are considered aircraft so is that, is, that, is that good right there? So this is me writing this yes, out. So, yeah, that, yes. So we have to have a table called sessions. And in the session, 
a single session will be a field. And I, I see things typing over here, Margaret. If you want to intervene and interject, if it's relevant, so far it's not relevant. Okay, great. You're going to have a pilot for that session. You're going to have a, I'm going to call aircraft for that session. You're also going to have, strictly speaking, a date and time. Okay. Okay. Yep. But so I just should have put this right here. Hang on. So now you've got to so have this session. So the whole event is driven around managing the sessions, right? So, yep. and during a session, you're going to have a pilot. And, a, and oh, an aircraft. I'll just go back to balloon for that. Sorry for that. So you got balloon, pilot, balloon, date, and time. Okay. That constitutes session. So the pilot actually has supporting, I'm going to put this up here, documents for pilots. And how many documents are for pilots? Because you said documents, but me Four. being a pilot, it's like. Five. Five. Okay. So it's your pilot license, probably a medical, probably proof of insurance, probably proof of currency or something like that. That's four I can think of. Um, yeah, so, actually, I look at both sides of the pilot license certificate. So that's two and then a headshot. Oh, and a headshot too. Okay, great. So you have documents for pilots to prove that they're legal. A balloon has to be airworthy. And, and that's why also this real quick for those of you wondering, this is inside baseball stuff. Airworthy is a legal term. Like in the United States, if you are a doctor, like medical doctor, that's a reserved word. If you are a professional engineer, that's a reserved word. Reserved meaning that there are legal implications for you saying that, right? If if I want to round around and go, um, oh, doctor, medical doctor, Ken, would you like to turn your head and cough for me? <laughs> right? I can't legally do that. I could try to do that. But legally, the government could come down and put in and say, hey, Richard, we're going to charge you with misrepresenting a doctor. Okay. Professional engineer is another reserved word. Those are special words. And so airworthiness is like that too. So part of you building a data system is understanding the terminology, the inside baseball kind of, if you will, the inside slang and terminology. And so the to, to establish that the balloon is airworthy, um, so we have these pilots over here, pilot one, pilot two, pilot three, pilot four. But really what you have are sessions that the balloon is at, right? You know, you could actually have, if you had 30 sessions, you could have a different pilot and that, say you had 30 sessions over three days. I'm just going to make it up. Yeah. And you had what that balloon, every session it flew, you could have 30 different pilots flying that balloon. Now you may not have that, but that could happen, right? Maybe. Well, yeah, in theory it could, but in practice it's going to be two or three only. Yeah, but the rub is as soon as you say two or three, the road to hell is paved with limitations like that. Right. Yeah. Then right? somebody comes along with pilot number four. Yeah, and then and then you fix that, and then the day the night before the event, someone says, "Oh, well, we have this one balloon. It's a rental balloon, and people can rent it. The pilots can rent it, and because it has missiles on it, and twelve people want to fly it, and then you got a problem." So. Really, you're not going to have pilot fields that are pilots on the balloon. A balloon will be part of a session. The session will have a pilot. It'll have a balloon. It'll have a date and time. Okay, so then we also are, are going to have documents for balloons too. The document for the balloon establishes establishes airworthiness. Now, notice Ken... Ken I'm asking Ken kind of open-ended questions. He says, and he gives you his best answer as he knows it right now, right? But understand that his position could change because his boss tells things to change. So once again, you have to look at kind of any absolutes that he does. I'm just kind of recapping. He said, oh, it never happened more than three. And then, of course, it happened. So Ken, tell me more about what your needs are. So we, we have to have a session table. So once again, the idea is if we have a, a specific noun like this, this is a table, this is a table, that's a table, that's a table. This is probably a table because we know that we could stick containers in there, right? But, if, but you might be able to put all the five containers documents See, this is, so this is a good one right here. So should well, you make a, a, a documents for pilots table or should you do field, um, let's say pilot license front, pilot license back, then you have 
pilot uh, pilot photo. Then you have pilot. They have flight to actually review. Uh, flight review. Okay, flight review. Well, that establishes that all this means is that the pilot has flown um, for the population out there has flown recently, and recently is a loose term. It depends on the kind of aircraft. And then do you have a do you have an insurance requirement or oh medical yep. medical medical and insurance. But is the pilot insured or is the aircraft insured? Because in a world well, of aircraft, it's aircraft, or at least on helicopters. <laughs> yeah, um, it it tends to be a combination of the pilot and the aircraft. So yeah, the end number is on there, but the pilot who is also insured is there. So uh, yeah, an insurance almost is a, a connector between the balloon and the pilot. Okay, I'm going to leave that one out right now because that one's ugly almost everywhere yep. you go. So I'm going to leave that yep. one out, but I'm going to say, Doc, so so here's the rub. Here's the question. I'm going to get back to the question. So these are container fields, maybe, and we're drawing this out. So this is what they call when you're doing data modeling, conceptual data modeling, okay? Um, then you start getting to the actual data modeling where you start gluing primary keys and stuff like that. That's pretty straightforward. Um, but I'm trying to decide if this should be five container fields or it should be fields where one record down here is one document, right? Uh, one record is a single document, right? And that's a good question. That's a really excellent question. So how would you answer this question? Does anyone want to take a guess at how you decide which way this goes? This is a this is a senior level question right here. Senior engineers should be able to answer this question. I can tell you that I started with all of them in one field, but I'm having more conversations about it, each record, uh, a record for each document. So it, in that case of one pilot, you have uh, five pieces there. It would be five records in a documents table. Uh, Scott suggests an answer to the question be one record for each document because they have specific purposes. I mean, Scott's not wrong. Absolutely, Scott's not wrong. It's not what I'm looking for. So let's go back to one of the things I said at the beginning. I'm going to wait too much time on this. Keep in mind your final output or results. So here's the deal. If someone says, I would like a report, I want a report and I want to see on this report all the medical certificates that have been issued. So medical certificate is where you go to the doctor, they check to see, A, if you're breathing, they check your heartbeat to make sure you're alive, you're not some sort of vampire going on, you can see, you're not blind, they check all this stuff. And I put a uh, exam ever in the last year that regulatory will change to based on your age and the kind of aircraft you fly. If you're flying airliners, right, like that one guy who tried to crash everyone on Alaska flight, he has to have a physical every six months. So he passed the physical within every six months. But what if someone says, I want a report, I want a printout of every medical certificate because there's one doctor who's been taking bribes and we need to look to see if that doctor is on any of these and we need to remove those medicals. If it's buried in pilots, that's going to be really hard to do. You might be able to do it if it's the same field. But if you just did field, say you're really clever up here because you're like Nick and you're going to do field. And then you're also going to have a dynamic field name, right? And the dynamic field name you could type in and then put it. So you have five containers that are really not assigned to anything. And you have a pop-up. Right. You see this like on uh, phone numbers, like this phone number is his home landline. This is his cell phone. This is his fax. Right. Right. So suddenly putting it in here. Becomes a reporting hassle if you have to itemize or target any of these specifically, if they're individual down here, then you for each record, you're going to have uh, you're going to have two fields. You're going to have the, the field name, a dynamic field name. And then you're also going to have the field, which will be which will be a container. And then you could go in there and do a find for every dynamic field that says medical. Have a list of you and just print them. So it's a reporting issue is where this comes in, Margaret. Okay. This is a reporting issue. You need to hear this is right down the line. For those of you running about Margaret, she's slowly but surely weaseling, promoting her right out of being a what happened to Miles Debsky. They start doing broadcasts and stuff. They learn all this, then they move out of broadcasting the TV show and they end up be doing development uh, professionally because they learned how by watching the show. So so does this make sense, Ken? What I said here, it's a choice. I think the choice is largely driven by if you're ever going to have to do any reporting in here, right? Dig into this down in here, right? 
So I, I see two scenarios here. For the most part, when I'm looking at a solution for just one event, then the report is, is the pilot's documents, are the pilot's documents in order and up to date? So the report comes from the pilot. That said, if I wanted to move this to a someone else's event, then I might want, because now I'm duplicating it. I did it for Balloon Fiesta. Now I'm doing it for Colorado Springs. And so I'm kind of making a duplicate, or maybe I need to send them the files. It would be easier if it was uh, one record, a single document, because I could easily find all the flight reviews or photos and just send those that way. So there's really kind of on one scenario, one works and another scenario, the other way would work. Yeah, I, just because you, I want the flexibility for me um, when this comes up, I would force the, these to be, uh, you'd have one pilot and five related document records. Now, Andy asked a really great question just now, which is how do you ensure that the dynamic name is uh, consistent? So what I would do is I would have a pop-up list, Andy, that would actually be a pop pop up not so they don't type it up i'm typing here because i'm making notes but a pop-up and when you pop it it says pilot license front pilot license back it would have these specific items on the pop-up and part of your certification to make sure the pilot was there um there's like a green check this pilot's good to go you have a data entry screen with the pilot you can have these fields on there and you can say are each of these valid or are they're not blank let's just let's just pretend that if you put data in the container field some sort of picture in there it's valid obviously you'd want to look at it to make sure the medical was dated correctly etc but just let's simplify it for the moment you're putting five containers in there check 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 it's good you could also write a script that would go to the related record pretty easily and check that there are five related records and that and, and that each of these items have been have been accounted for. And if they're all there, either way, you've got it covered. Okay. Once again, and if something's missing, it tells you that something's sure, missing. Sure, sure, absolutely. It tells you it's missing. So, but that's how you could Andy asked a really great question. How do you control this? It's just a pop up, a if nothing else, a static pop up list. Not a dynamic pop up list, a static pop up list. Now you could try to come up with a pop up list that shows you the items that are still remaining, right? Like if I've already done the pilot's license, but I'm missing, say, these two, then only these two would show up on there. You could, that's, a, once again, more part of the conversation, but it's not really data modeling. It's a good question. It's kind of what we did with Larry with the baseball stuff. Like, let me come over here. So this is the demo that I was working on. It's on this video coming up. It's called Football Demo. It's actually, I think, European football in this case. And here is this right here. So what we did is we had this right here. Then we had a uh, hot dog concession staffing. We have this pop-up list, okay? This pop-up in this case is coming from the other table. But if I went into field definitions and I said uh, pilot um, doc, you meant, um, you create that and you're like, okay, that's great. But if people just type in here, they're always going to type different stuff. They're going to spell pilot pie lot they're going to spell it differently every time so what you want is you want to go to layout mode click on it once go over to the right side right pane right panel in the right pane not an edit box you want a drop down menu if you really want to be militant or drop down list drop down list is encourages people to put the correct thing in but they can override the question is how tough do you want to make it on me say a, a pop-up menu when you do when you create a pop-up if you say a new a value list correction a new value list uh, this is going to be pilot doc and then so it can be a static value which is how you'd start this off pilot you know if i come back over here and grab these let me see if i can grab these and just paste them in here Oop. uh pilot of course the font's bigger here hopefully that doesn't freak out too much Okay, pilot license front, pilot license back. So we hit OK. If I go back in here and edit that, oh uh, yeah, fix the font. So that's now that now you're kind of locked into that as opposed to having it dynamically created, right? So you do that, you do that, you're down here. So this keeps people from making it up. Okay, it has to be one of those. And th that doesn't really matter whether the fields are on this table or they're on a supporting 
separate data modeling table? That's the question, right? David Angel asked about license table, insurance table. I don't think you need to unless you're going to be in there seriously validating and managing that, if that makes sense. Um, because the the reality is, is that you just, they're documents for you. All you have to do is make sure they're present and they're not expired. Okay. Now, if Ken also had a medical examiner who was going to dig through this stuff, and he also had a representative of the FAA who was going to dig through it, then you might break it down so that the medical examiner goes to the medical documents and just looks at those. And then once again, you could manage that with found sets too. But this is this idea of where do you build the tables? Where do you build the tables? And so this is a session table. So Ken, do you remember your other comments you had? Did we have we captured all this? Or is there other stuff in here we need to capture as well? Uh, just that like we have five um documents for a pilot, we have five documents for a balloon as well. Or four actually. Okay, so yeah, so you'd so have... it'd be the same. It would be the same thing on under a balloon, and that should say balloon actually, right in the line above where your cursor is. Uh, yep, I screwed that up. Thank you. Let me click that. I'm just realizing we have so that so so this right here was an it's this screen right here is a little misleading. This is it's either this way or it's this way. So it's either this group of them in here or this table here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of remove this i'm going to copy it remove it and i'm just going to say dynamic field name and i'm going to put um the possible dynamic field names in here i'm just going to put that in parentheses that makes sense otherwise some of yeah. you see this this screen here it's going to cause your brains to explode flight review medical comma i'm going to get rid of that i don't need that so then that's should be all of them. So that so, is that all of them? One, two, yep. three, four, five. Yep, there we go. So the pilots up here, then the pilot, you know, obviously is gonna have a uh you're gonna have a field. I'm just gonna say you have a name, then they obviously have a field, and then you're gonna have some sort of ID primary, right? So it'd be ID pilot, you know. An, uh, like an option P or something, and there's the P on there. And then down here, you'd have to have a foreign key down here so you can attach it, right? So down here, you'd yeah. have the the field. You're going to have ID, 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 ID underscore pilot underscore. And then I hit option F on the Mac, get this little curly F. So that's your primary key, foreign key. You'd have a primary key down here too, but these two allow the relationship to be set up. Same thing over here. You'd have a field. And then you're going to have, uh, we're going to have the registration. Uh, let me see. If airworthiness. Like, yeah, air, airworthiness certificate. Annual is, inspection. And then the lovely balloon photo. Inspection. Do you have a maintenance manual for that? It comes out, that would come out of your maintenance logbook for that, right? The annual inspection logbook. comes out of the logbook. Yeah, out yeah. of balloon logbook. It's a little weird because you only have one and then you have field and then you have a picture. Now, once again, these are fields under here, but they're not really fields. These are going to be value of uh, pop-up, right? That's the kind right. of thing. So it's one field. So it's really this value of pop-up thing that goes on here, everyone. So um, because we want it to match what we did on the pilot side. Yeah, it's kind of what you want to do. So the really there's only going to be a oh, tab. It's going to be a field and it's going to be dynamic name of docu document then you're going to have a field which will be the container and then um actually these values here copy cut i'm going to put them right here so that's kind of how that is very similar to what i did down here but i notated differently questions question from twitch code go how do you need how do you need to display the documents this is for ken so if you're on a pilot screen let me show you my database, right? So this is a real database. Here is what I have on my screen. In this case, with my solution, I did make, I did not make a remote documents. And I'm probably gonna re, re, uh, re, uh, regret, regret, that? regret that decision, okay? However, I haven't quite got there yet. And so I have face, headshot, California driver's license, birth certificate. Then this is some other notes here. This is some pilot experience form. And so what we do is, and so this is how we see it. I sure can in some sort of similar way. If I had a portal of this, I would probably put 
figure out a way of putting the headshot up here and then put the rest of these in a portal. Like here's training sessions here, right? Endorsements here, some other stuff that we need. I'd probably put another tab in here of the images and just have them on a vertical list that goes down the page. That answer the question to code to go? That's how I would display it because I just have to manage that I have it. Because the reason I have to keep these records for five years on the CFI, no, five years on the on the TSA and three years on the CFI, well, I can't remember which one, one or the other. I keep them all for a long time. Because you want to make I have my solution if you want to see how I'm doing. Yeah, it. you want to always show yours real quick. I'm gonna stop sharing. Why don't you share your screen real quick if you want to show yours and see what it looks like? So I I hear the pilot here, and actually I'm having this the stuff about this this specific event and then the hey, pilot. I can tell Nick has been here. Cause see that crap up there, right there at the top. This right, here? The data. Yeah, yeah, I, this, yeah, I got this from Nick. I did. Yeah, this is you've been nickified. I I can I see Nick a mile away here. All right. Yeah. So I I just have them here, and I actually track um a, you know val a validity and that kind of stuff, and then the balloon stuff is here. So it's just yeah. Here's what I'm tracking on the particular um deals, and yeah, here's all the good or bad stuff. I'm pretty sure Nick didn't approve the red thing across the top. He would have. No, he probably... hates that stuff. I like red though. It tells you that something's wrong with this record. What is wrong? No, with this actually, record? actually, the deal is, is I I'm doing these for multiple events now, mm. and so because I have the same looking database up, the red rock has the red line across the top. Balloon Fiesta has a different color scheme. So you do events by colors. I have engineers who do that. That makes a ton of sense. That makes a ton of sense. I love yep. it. Yeah. So All depending right. on the event, the, the header has a different color. All right. Cool. So quick question. This has been said already, but I'm going to write it down. So if anyone asks me coming in the future, I can write this down. Someone was came in late, was like, hey, did I miss a single clear solution statement at the beginning? Basically, the Ken saying what he's working on in like two sentences at the very beginning. So yeah, people, yeah. people don't so re recap of this, what this live stream is about. So this is about data modeling. It's about talking to the customer, figuring out their, they don't have a solution yet. So in this case, Ken has already built a bunch of stuff. I built some stuff, but I brought Ken in here because I could ask questions and, and I, didn't practice with him, so it's more of a, a, a freewheeling conversation. And you've seen what happened a couple of times. Ken sounded like it was really simple. Then he added that, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to fly the balloon 13 times or something over a couple of days. And that little thing, so the whole idea with this, and I'm going to go ahead and share back to my screen. The whole idea with this is that we want to figure out the tables and the structure of what we're trying to build. What are the tables? Like if I go to my solution over here and I go to tables, this came out a starting point, but I have a student table, essentially, okay? I have an instructor table. A lot of these tables we don't use, so they come from starting points, so we kind of recycle it. But if you were starting from scratch, you would have students, instructors, aircraft. In my case, I'm doing training sessions with the student, like they go fly for an hour, and then we have a little moment on the discuss it, and then I write it up. Make sense? So we have training sessions, instructors, students, and that way I can document all the training they've gone through. So when they go to the government for a pilot's license, I have all their training rolled up and I can present it as necessary, okay? And so that's what this is about, is deciding, the whole question about data modeling is, what are uh, the tables that will support the real business, you know, business world, right? What are the business, what does the business need? This Cotter, Ken, Ken is not providing training. So Ken's need and his, his balloon solution, he doesn't really need the training. He just needs to know that they're a certified pilot and they've gone through training recently. That's different than an instructor going, we flew yesterday, we flew today, we'll fly tomorrow. Uh, but then you got sick and the aircraft was down for an oil change. And, uh, you know, because you have to change the oil on the hot air balloon, very important. And so all this stuff has to go on, right? And... Um, you have to track all this. So the question, what are the tables that support this? And so Ken initially said, I'm just rewinding us real quick. He said, we have balloons. Got it. And then the question is whether you needed a container fields within. In Ken's solution, his documents are separate tables. In my solution, they're in the same table, but I have limits. I've only got five or six or seven of them in there. And if I go over that, I have to define more fields and I'm going to hate myself, right? 
because you know you should have taken the time to build it into a separate docs table initially, right? In fact, Ken's probably laughing because he probably used to have it this way in his solution, right? And then he got a hold of Nick, and Nick kind of, eh, right? That sound that correct, Ken? Um, actually, I had done that in previous solutions, so I learned coming into this one. Ah, I see. actually, so, already, so yeah, right. so yeah, yeah. Yeah, somewhere along the line, initially, you define all these items. What happens is you define a, a, a solution. So let's discuss, pivot to something. Well, let's talk about the balloon thing. You have a balloon, okay? And then you have a document for the balloon, a picture of the balloon. We know what it looks like. Then, you know, but say you're, say you're the balloon manufacturer. Let's have a different conversation. Let's try this all over again. This will be a fun one. Ken, you are now a hot air balloon manufacturer. You ready for this? Okay. Yeah, I'm being completely serious. So I come to you and I say, hey, this is uh, Ken Kineski Balloons is his new company. His balloons capable of Mach 1 speed, really fast balloons. So I go, Ken, so obviously you're going to build a database. So you're building the database because you need to manage because as an aircraft is created, you have to go to the, to the federal government, Canada, in Europe, EASA, FAA, um, wherever you're at. And you yeah. have to have the aircraft certified by the government that it is a airworthy aircraft. And so Ken needs a way of managing the aircraft that are coming off the factory floor, not building them. I need to track the system as they come off the factory floor and they go out, they have to test. I know just loosely you have to roll them off out of the factory. They have to be test flown and somehow they have to be certified. So that's right. the conversation, Ken. You're the CEO of the company. Okay. You've hired yeah. your first 50 employees. They're all in there sewing like mad building this thing. So I know because I'm not the dumbest person on the planet that you're tracking balloons. We need balloons. What else what I need, are we going to need to track as part of your process of being a manufacturer? I'm thinking I need a model, a model number. Uh, I think I need a serial Wait, 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 number. wait. So all the balloons aren't the same? No. So it's almost like a car. So then me being, I don't know shit about balloons, but I know yeah. about cars and like Toyota makes a bunch of different models. So right. you'd have a model... And so then you'd have, let's just say that you have size. Okay, yeah, sure. But, but, okay. But then let's just say the F5, I'm making a note to myself. Now would the size be a field up here, right? Or is that another table? I'm asking uh, the question out loud. I think, I think each model could have multiple sizes. Okay. I probably only have five sizes, but they could, I, each size could be within or a subset of the sizes within each model. Yeah, so the question is whether this becomes a field or you actually have a sizes table. I don't know if you need a sizes table. I'm, yeah, I'm I, not, again, it's probably five sizes. Well, because this five could models, be a five, yeah. It could be a pop up list that's static, right? Static, static sure. pop up list with five sizes. Once again, I don't want to create a table if I don't need to, because if you create a table, then you have to have primary keys and foreign keys. You have to put on the relationship graph, right? So if I could just put it in a field and make a static pop-up, that is the easiest thing to build. And I build it faster and cheaper and you pay less money for it. The question is if I cut this corner and I don't build it as another table, is it going to cause problems for you down the road? Well, I guess I'm, I'm almost would back up. I would, in my brain, I would have a record for each balloon we make. Okay, that's up here. Fields on, yeah, that's up there. And on, on, on that record for that balloon, I would have the model, the serial number, the size, the end number, the red. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We go. We have, we have the yeah. model. Model. Then, okay. Size. Size. Serial uh, number. Cere that's serial. It'll number. have a serial. It'll have a serial. Yep. Yep. And then the registration number, the end number. You actually get, okay, off topic question. You actually get a, a number for a balloon? Yes. Wow. And it actually applies to the envelope, not the basket. So the the the, the balloony part, not the people the hanging underneath. The fabric, the fabric above is that's what is considered the aircraft and gets the end number. Yes. And so then okay. I can put, I can change out the baskets underneath. Um, wow, I had no yeah. idea. All right, yeah. I learned something new. See, that's the cool part about doing this job and being a, a developer. You get to go someplace and learn some new stuff that you didn't already know about. It's really cool. Yeah, I would probably put some sort of a um, the model would include the pattern, so I would probably just put colors as another field. I'm glad you know about this. I'm glad. So then we have all this. So then this is one one record is one balloon. 
Okay, then you have models. Do we need this as tables? Maybe depends. I don't know. I, it, I think with only five, I think you could easily do it with a with just a value list. Okay, so if I got it, really you know good and I got five hundred oh. employees, then I'd expand the number of models and maybe need that. Yeah, that's another one that comes up. I just sorry it's based on that, but yeah. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The, the year manufacturer. So year um, manufacturer. Yeah. This is kind of this idea of this conversation, this inner and, and the interaction. And so it's understanding. So, so then, so then the balloon rolls out, it's done. Ta da! The last sewing person has sewed it all up. Now, what are we, what does the process look like in your mind of that balloon? Because it has to be sold to a customer, but the customer can't buy it yet because it's not official. How do we make the balloon official? I need to do a test inflation. And so, so I would, uh, at, yeah, at, uh, do a test inflation and inspection and, you know, all that kind of stuff that goes with it. And at that point, um, as a manufacturer, I can issue uh, an airworthiness certificate. Okay, backup. So do we test, is area aircraft tested once? Does it test multiple times because maybe it has a leak the first time? I don't. I'm just talking out loud. If it's full of, if it's a balloon full of gas, I'm assuming you could have holes in it. It shouldn't, but you might, right? Does it always pass on the first time? Is it like rock solid or do they sometimes fail? My, my guess is having actually been to a manufacturer that there is a visual inspection before the test inflation. And um, the, the test inflation is kind of the final inspection so okay. there's probably been a series of inspections through the manufacturing process. So probably, yeah, you'd have to decide how you wanted to build this, but you'd have inspections, right? And then th there would be probably a feel, which is the um, kind of a dynamic, static, static pop-up again, right? Andy, this is for you. And this would be the kind of inspection, right? And frankly, if you have an inspection, I'm just going to be upfront with everyone here. You should, if someone says it's an inspection, unless you're dealing with organized crime and, and a and thousand dollars always results in a pass of the inspection, sometimes <laughs> they don't pass. Kind of inspection, pass fails. There could be a follow on inspection if it fails, right? So if right. we do an inflation, if you inflate it and it doesn't hold air, then there, then that would fail, and then you'd have a second inspection. So, really, inspections definitely has to be a table with one or more related records. Okay. Okay, so I'm actually going to derail the whole conversation because something <laughs> popped up that we don't see very often. Hi, I am new to FileMaker as of this year. Uh, it seems like when the FMP12 file is on the server, all new development is done in the server. Feels like it's too big of a risk for a developer. How does FileMaker handle offline development and updates to the server and leverage existing data on the server? Example, database TOs, relationship updates to existing TOs. Let me just simply say that um, if you have a group of users that are using a solution on the server, and it's a small group, five or 10 people or less, you can probably do development on the server in real time because that also backs up your work as you go, okay? If you have a solution that you have 120, 30, 50 people, and they're all really working on that server hard, then you need to be working on an offline copy. There are several different ways of automating that process. The automation of moving from a development copy to, a, to the production copy is not that capability is not a free thing that's built into FileMaker. It's available via third-party products. There's a company called 360 Works Deploy. They make a solution that allows you to push this out. I think uh, Geist Proof or Proof Geist or whatever they're called have a, a solution. I've never used it, so I generally only – I've had people come to me recently and say, Richard, we'd like to put our amazing product on your show. And I say, well, that's great, except I only generally talk about products that I endorse because I use them. 360 Works folks are good. They have a deploy solution. I will tell you that Claris is, has been working for a lot of years on this ability to take the changes. Like if you have an online copy and, it, and you start with an identical offline copy and you add some new layouts, you add some new fields and do things like that, they've been mm, working on this very slowly to the ability for you to take those changes and just apply them to the copy that's on the server. My understanding is they're supposed to make improvements in that area. We already know that they already work on this. They've been working on it. 
but they haven't been working on this capability as fast as I would like to see. So Claris, I think, is paying attention to that and will move in that. What's one of the things they want to move towards? I've been asking for it for years, right? So for those of you who watch the show, we talk about the Star Trek transporter, taking the code, dematerializing the code into little bits, changing it, then re-putting it back in, reconstructing the solution. But yeah, so the answer is, if you're a small, if you're brand new to FileMaker, hopefully you have a small team that's using this solution. You should be able to do the work on a live copy of the file. If you have a bunch of people and if you're doing work on it and somehow it disrupts them, like you have to work on the layout, that they're using at the same time, then you might have an offline copy, but it's a pain in the ass to do this. It would be better to duplicate the layout work on it than copy all the changes into there because then you can make the change immediately and get feedback from them immediately, right? That's always the thing, right? If you, The easier you make the collection of feedback, the more likely you're going to gather the feedback to make a better solution. But if you have this big drawn-out process where I have an offline copy, then I post it up, but if they say, hey, I really need this change made, and you make it an hour later, then they see it, as opposed to you making the change, then a week or two later, they get the update. Hell, they're going to for half the customers I have will have forgotten that they asked for it until they run into the problem again. That makes sense? So having a more agile, faster development cycle time has value, has real, real intrinsic value. Of course, big you know, Oracle SQL developers will say, oh, we like that offline copy, and then we roll it out, then we, trying to get customers to put down their cell phones and test software is really difficult. There's a product called 360 Works Deploy. If you really, really want to do offline development, I'll just bring this up real quick. 360 Works, they make products. One of their big products is called Deploy, and this is the product right here. There's a couple other ones, and it, this works pretty damn good. You work on offline copy, hit a button, it rolls it up and shoots it to the servers. But it's like, you know, $1,500 US or $1,800 US. So it's adds cost to it, but it gives you that offline capability. Personally, between you, me, and the wall, I've got this one helicopter company we're doing work for, and they have maybe a five people using it max. We do the live changes right on their server. Of course, the other day, Margaret was making an edit to it. She deleted a bunch of <laughs> by accident, and she comes to me going, you know, I inadvertently deleted live data. <laughs> And I say, fine, we have backups to run every hour, so we're going to roll back an hour or two and fix it. And the customer hadn't used it at all in that case, or very much. We rolled to a backup, we restored it, we're fine. Okay. Yeah, don't delete things in portals. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say, general, don't delete things in general, at least data records, very carefully, if at all. So that's another conversation. So, we're, yeah, we're way off in the weeds here. So no, I, I knew that was a deliberate weed toss, but... Someone who was totally a deliver new. a weed moment off in the weeds. Yeah. So let's, uh, we're going to pick this up tomorrow. I don't know if we're going to invite Ken back. There's only so much hard I Berlin I can handle. But I want to thank Ken for a lot of fun. He is great. He's a great sport and asking these questions. So we'll need another victim for tomorrow. So who, we need someone to volunteer to be a victim to discuss this data modeling idea. Because for me, it's easy. And, and I understand where the decision points are made, but I'm trying to, con if I do this a number of times for you in real, real life, then hopefully some of you will start to gather the skills to ask these questions and know when to ask them and what to ask. It's not that hard. It's like, hey, should that be a table or should this be fields in there? Well, what do you want to do with it? And how, and how contained is it, right? Right? Oh, there'll only be three, two pilots ever for the balloon. And then, well, there might be three. And then, ah, oh, well, there could be four. As soon as that customer starts weaseling, hot clue that it needs to be its own table. Because remember, it's unlimited numbers of records. You could have a thousand pilots on a balloon, a million pilots on a balloon. That's my, more my than question moving forward, Richard, is um, now how do we structure the relationship graph to tie those all together? You don't have to do this today. But I think well, that's the. Why don't we do it tomorrow then? That's a great question. So why don't we pick up the balloon thing tomorrow? I'm going to design design it from the relationship graph. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm going to mentally go over it, but it's yeah, going to be pretty yeah. straightforward. I'm not going to build all the layouts, but I'm going to talk because because the hard the 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 hard part is what we did today. Tomorrow is just cookie cutter. There's rules we follow, the anchor buoy rules. We just follow the rules. Okay. okay, we follow the rules. Tomorrow is cookie cutter. Knowing the questions to ask and then going to cookie cutter mode is step one, step two. So tomorrow we'll do step two. That's good. That's fine. So then, and, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, since we're about to wrap up, since we were talking about being a manufacturer, 
-hmm. we we actually built a balloon um at the event two years ago i've mm -hmm. got four pictures i'd love to show you oh shoot show me, show me those if you'd like yeah oh, i'm just gonna throw them up if you want okay yeah show them up that's so people see what's going on yeah since we'd kind of had that conversation so um this is um multiple people they built this thing in a week now they came with it in, in already cut up and so the, in all the pieces. So they literally had a number of sewing machines working to um, sew this together. And then, so they've got a, a kind of a major piece over here and they're the pieces, they just, as they keep putting them together, they get bigger and bigger. And then they get into the rigging here. So that's, you see, they're kind of taking mm -hmm. a closer look at it here. And um, now it's all in one big piece, but there's now they're starting to do some of that visual inspection before they actually took it outside and stood it up as that test inflation. Yeah, that's really neat. The uh, and and I will just simply emphasize again, this is why being a filemaker developer is so cool, because you get to go meet different people and different jobs. Taylor Sharp was building a solution that supported the security forces at nuclear power plants. How, how interesting and different is that yeah. than hot air balloons? Yeah. Um, and I had another different businesses who manufactured this whole cannabis, and they hired me to build the hot weed database, right? All, pot, all walks of life need databases, and you get to go as a developer and meet people, learn something you've never learned before, and, and then help them be more successful. It's a very rewarding job, to be honest with you. Very rewarding. All right. That's yes. it for today. We're going to come back tomorrow and build some, build Ken's hot air balloon solution. Yes. Or at least structure the relationship. The structure part. Yeah. Just the structure. How do we, how do we structure what, now that we have the pieces, how do we put it together? Yep. Cool. All right. Thanks, See everyone tomorrow. All right. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir.